Hi everyone, my name is Antonio Roberts and I'm an artist and curator based in Birmingham in the UK. I'm also the curator of the Copy Paste exhibition taking place at Pixel in Bergen, Norway at the moment. Um, today I'm just going to give a little bit of an overview of some of the works and do a curator's tour, which will hopefully give you a bit of understanding into the thought process behind the exhibition and also why some of the works are included in the exhibition. First, just a little bit of background about me as an artist and curator, which should hopefully give you some context into some of the four processes behind the exhibition. For over 10 years now, I've been curating exhibitions and making artwork that deal with copyright and technology, especially how um, technology is impacting how we create and how we share things. A couple of examples of this include uh, my works that take aim at Disney, in particular Transformative Views and Sticker Book, and it really, they really seek to question how um, Disney have lobbied copyright lawyers and created laws that basically extend copyright terms to the point where um, we're not going to see any modern works enter the public domain within our lifetime. Um, other works include copyright atrophy where I look at um, logos as symbols and transform them to the point and to the point where they're unrecognizable really questioning how many times do you have to transform a work before it is a new work of art. And finally, um, my most recently curated exhibition as an independent curator was 2017's exhibition, No Copyright Infringement Intended, which looked at the role of copyright in the digital age and more looking at the misunderstandings that artists have of how copyright works and uh, with how lawyers and copyright um, it really hasn't caught up to how we create in the digital age and how we share things. With the exhibition copy paste, I really wanted to look at um, the role that copying plays within a lot of um, artist practices. So I think if you are an artist, then there's no doubt that you've um, copied work in some way, whether that be from pages of pages in a magazine or just really taking inspiration from the artwork of others and transforming it in some way, but still yeah, copying it in another way. And really just looking at how even though this is a practice which is taught to us from a very young age, uh, whether that be at school and we're asked to copy the work of you know, artists like Picasso, etc., um, when we enter our teenage years or when we're trying to go into work, this kind of this copying is really frowned upon, and it's strange that we, there's that there's that transition, and that it is a practice that's frowned upon. So I think if you do incorporate copying in some way, you're really working in this blurry area, this grey area of um, what is right and wrong and so with the exhibition copy paste I wanted to showcase that artwork of artists who do work in this area even if they're not necessarily making a political point about it but they are making this work which quite clearly is about copying whether that's the work of themselves or the work of others uh, to create new works. The exhibition in total features the work of nine artists and art collectives um, which spans physical art versus digital artworks and through the exhibition, really, I wanted to show that copying is natural and that it's a thing that should be encouraged. Um, so I'll just take you through each of the artworks and um, how my thought process behind in, them in picking them to the exhibition. So I'll start with the work of um, Duncan Poulton. Uh, Duncan Poulton is an artist based in the UK and he actually previously exhibited in my exhibition No Copyright Infringement Intended in 2017. Um, here he's exhibiting a few works, his e-hoarder series, uh, his piles, circles and adventures of a black square workstations. So with Duncan's work, um, what I really like about it is that he obviously is working in collage, but the way he gets his artworks from his sources, he will scour the internet looking for kind of, um, I say accidental images, but images which you wouldn't necessarily consider artwork. So he'll go through sites of uh, listing objects for sale, like you know, eBay. Um, in fact, he's going to be talking a little bit about this in his workshop, um, Internet Archaeology. So I won't give away too much there. But yeah, so I like the way that um, he looks for non-obvious sources for his um, artworks and the way he combines them together into new works and in particular you can see like his obsession 
we're finding these images in the pile artwork. Um, I don't know how many places he had to go to go get those images, but you can clearly see it's quite a lot. Um, So really, I think his work uh, encapsulates this kind of working with collage and scouring the internet for uh, images, just like the abundance of images that there are and his ability to sort through them. Next, I want to talk about a complementary artwork um, by Lorna Mills. So Lorna Mills is an artist based in Canada and in a way, yeah, I put I like the, I like her artwork together with Duncan Paulson's artwork. So Lorna Mills is working with collage also, um, particularly with animated gifs. So with her animated gifs, she will go through sites like you know, 4chan, Russian websites, just really obscure places to find uh, sources of imagery, creating sometimes quite obscene images, which um, are quite playful and also yeah, obviously obscene. Um, and to make these really just, I'm going to say clusterfuck off um, images, she often works with like um, very large um, canvases of found animated GIFs. Um, so I wanted to put those two works together because I think they really emphasise what you can make by going through the internet and having all this culture at your fingertip wherever, and not always just necessarily working with things that are current but looking through archives so yeah and that's Lorna Mills's artwork and um, next I want to talk about Peter Sander's artwork so Peter Sand is a Finnish artist um, or more so activist you may know him more so for his role in creating the Pirate Bay um, but in these days he's more of an activist and he created an artwork called Copy Machine which basically it's um, I like it because it, it, it shows like the almost null effect that copying can have um, that it, there's not an immediate um, one to one relation between something being copied and losses being made so he created this artwork uh, where it copies the song Crazy by Niles Barkley over and over again in a very self-contained unit. You can see there it's a Raspberry Pi that just copies something and on the display showing how much money was lost from uh, each copy. Uh, say for, you know, each one costs four dollars or whatever and the amount will just infinitely grow and grow. And it's, I think it shows really that copying doesn't immediately result in losses especially if it's on one computer that is a personal computer. Um, so it's quite playful, but um, of course with his activism work, especially with the Pirate Bay and Pirate Party, yeah, it points to wider questions around copying and the effect that it has on culture. Um, the good effect and possibly the bad effects as well. And now I move on to the work of Carol Breen. So Carol Breen is an Irish artist um, and I like her work, her work Still Stillness, um, really kind of follows a very clear trajectory from her past work. So um, I'm, I've known of Carol's work since around 2016, I think it was, or maybe even 17. And she remakes her work, she does what she calls remaking her work, where she'll take a motif, she'll take a um, piece of artwork and remake it using different techniques. So screen recording it, taking new pictures of it, projecting it into a room, and then again recording that. So you'll see this triangle motif that's in quite a lot of her artwork, where she's remaking it over and over and over again using different processes. And it's still copying, but she's copying her own work, so um, she's not necessarily taking the work of others, but even through this process, we're basically seeing creativity in action. She, it's showing that it's an iterative process, that it isn't just you arrive at a final piece, you take something you are changing over and over again, and you may never arrive at a final piece. Um, just 
presenting different iterations of it. So even though, yes, in contrast to some of the other works, she's not taking a work of others and copying them, but it still is copying. It is still is um, an iteration and a remix. So with Carol's work, I quite like that about her approach. The final works I want to talk about that are based in the Pixel Studio are the works by Constan and by Eric Schreiber. So um, Constan are a design collective, a collective of artists based in Brussels in Belgium, who I've known for well over 10 years now. And they often deal with open source software, free culture, and take on a really philosophical way of thinking about this, not just necessarily focusing on the code and the freedoms that it gives, but its sociological impact and just so much more. I really recommend you go look at their work. So with Constant, um, last year at a festival in Berlin, a Write to Write festival, I saw one of the co-directors, Sven Kersnelting, uh, doing a talk about different licenses. And these were, um, I guess, in a way, theoretical licenses, um, thinking about how can you create um, art licenses that better reflect different um, case studies. So rather than just like, literally, can you copy something, can you not? Can it take into um, account uh, societal norms or norms within a small community? So some of the licenses include uh, the consumer's dilemma license, the non-white heterosexual <laughs> male license, the peer production license, and the climate, climate strike software license. I think um, even the idea of these licenses really take into account that um, not everything is just about um, right, the, the right to reuse things. Sometimes there are more moral rights in which you want to specify that people can use things only if they meet certain conditions, which again might be very specific to a smaller society or um, so on. So presented here are some of the licenses that um, they have talked about and that they have mentioned um, in that presentation. Uh, they will also be doing a presentation um, about Cinema for Sauvage, which um, they, of course they will talk about more what basically you know, they kind of want to reject licenses and copyright, which is more of an action than a law in itself. So like it's almost like a law or a license which is against its own existence. Um, so how do you operate in a very free way when you are basically bound by laws. And the last artwork within the space I want to talk about is by the work of Eric Schreiber. So um, I invited him based on his book, Copy This Book, which is a really good introduction to um, ideas about copyright. Uh, it's short, it focuses on more European copyright law, but it doesn't just necessarily get into the very specific details because I know, um, I'm sure he realizes that not everyone is a copyright lawyer, but it talks about like the societal impacts of copying, of plagiarism, and or like what might happen when you do allow your works to be copied or want to copy someone else's work, and it does so in a very um, in a way that is, that can be comprehended by everyone, not just those who have studied copyright. Um, he is presenting an image from the book, copy this book, which is right at the back of the book. And it's an image of a French poet, uh, I'm going to probably not pronounce his name correctly, so I apologise, but um, Loche Clement. And he was a poet who was himself well known for plagiarising the work of others. And, and the image that Eric has used was actually, um, he had to kind of like plagiarise that. So he... Th if you, you probably may know that even though work, when there are works that are in the public domain, photographs that are taken of those public domain artworks are still in it themselves under copyright or you know, of, of the museum that hired the photographer. So you're not necessarily able to use those photographs or those illustrations or when they've been digitized. So um, Eric's use of that image is in itself questionable because it goes against the uh, museum's uh, licenses. So it's quite a quite controversial act to plagiarise someone who himself was known to plagiarise. And I encourage you also to do read um, the book, copy this book, which is located within the gallery. 
uh, it's a very good introduction to copyright. In the Pixel Swipe Salon, we have a couple of artworks, um, a couple of different artworks even. So um, the artwork that I'll first talk about is Young Antiquities by Lovid. So I've known of Lovid's artwork for quite a while now, especially in regards to uh, glitch artwork, which is something I used to do a while back. And they are also well known for making uh, textiles, fabrics, prints of uh, of their glitch works. So with Young, Young Antiquities, they 3D scanned the their, some of their textiles and are making their 3D models available to the public for them to remix and do things with to create new artworks. And I think that's quite a bold move to do to allow someone to have, I guess, full access to quite good resolution scans of your artwork, but yeah, they're freeing it up to interpretation, opening up people to uh, make artworks from them. I'm displaying them here in the Pixel Cyber Salon um, at you know, random scale, so of course in real life these would not have been such big 3D models, but it allows you to get up really close and see all of the details. Um, of course, if you do decide to make anything, please like if you go to the link within the labels, you can download the 3D models and make something of your own. So please do share them with either Pixel or Lovid themselves. <coughs> so a complimentary artwork to that is Sheer Integer by Matthew Plummer Fernandez and Julian Deswaif. And this is this artwork from 2017. Um, it, it, in a way it was somewhat controversial. So people um, have been making 3D models and upload them to websites to download them for, so people can download them for free for 3D printing or just for further manipulation in 3D modeling software or, or CAD software. So and people upload these um, models with a Creative Commons license which basically permits people to do what they want with them. So they make it for, use it for commercial use, for personal use, whatever the license um, dictates. So the two artists created a bot, a script, which would go through um, a website called Thinkiverse where some of these 3D models were being hosted and it would take the 3D models and combine them into random sculptures, random objects. You can see that you know, they're, they are all linked together and somehow they're all stacked on top of each other um, and then it would put the 3D models back up onto Thingiverse. Uh, incorporating the original titles of the um, models which they took uh, to to you know, reuse, um, and sometimes the response was quite negative. Some people felt that it was, I guess, spam or that it was um, not creative artwork. It was more noise. But still, they're exercising their their right to be able to remix an artwork, and. Yeah, it's. It, it, I think it shows, and bots can do this, scripts can do this. It's, but I still think it shows something that is quite creative, even if it is automated. That there is creativity and automation for sure. And um, and I think the two works together, um, Shiv Integer and um, Young Antiquities, they show different ways of approaching copying, or at least allowing and facilitating it. Whereas. Um, you have Lovid's work, which is encouraging people to, um, act, well, you know, actively encouraging people to take their work and make something new of it. And then you have Shiv Integer, which is exercising those rights, um, but still receiving some pushback. Um, but I still think both encourage creativity in in, the, in both ways. And like Young Antiquities. Shift integers being shown at random scales, again to them enable you to get close and see all of the different details. So thank you all for listening to uh, me talk, and hope that curator's tour was very interesting and enlightening to you all. And hope you know more about all the works. Um, want to say thank you to Pixel for the invitation to curate the exhibition. Uh, of course, I'm not able to be there in person, so I'm really thankful that they were able to. Uh, you know, through my direction, put it all together and uh, deal with all of the um, artworks. If you want to ask me any more questions, I can be usually found at uh, the username Hello Cat Food all over the internet or go through my website hellocatfood.com. And yeah, thank you very much and have a good day.